We are covering Matthew chapter 8 tonight, New King James Version again. And you remember when we left off in Matthew chapter 17, it was a transfiguration. So Jesus, he presented himself in all his glory, in his beautiful, shining glory, alongside of Moses and Elijah to his chosen disciples. So they had just witnessed Jesus in all his glory. Now, we're at Matthew 18, verse 1. <clears throat> at that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Okay, so picture this. They just have seen Jesus in all his glory. They kind of seem kind of like they have a lot of gall to ask him this question. It's like, why? <laughs> You know, what are you, what are you thinking here? Questioning the Lord, right? So like, what are they trying to get from him? But Jesus, of course, as usual, he takes it down to, you know, to where they can understand it. And verse two, <clears throat> then Jesus called a little child to him, set in the midst of them and said, assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever stumbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Excuse me, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. So you have to go back to that time period. Children were not thought of as very high on the totem pole. They were like to be seen and not heard, you know, stay out of the way. They weren't like very highly favored. So the fact that he did this was unprecedented. He was like bringing a child to him like, hey, this is what it's all about. And I think we can learn so much from this because a lot of times we, we come into the word or we come to study, we're like, oh, I already know about that. And we, we can kind of get an arrogant attitude because maybe we've made a study in this already, but that's definitely not where any of us need to be. There's always more to learn, right? Amen. Jesus wants us to be humble, right? He wants us to come to him with that. I love that wide-eyed look that kids get when they learn something new and they're like so excited about it. And, and I, I love when I feel that in my heart, when I'm learning something new or I get something new, which is all the time, it's like, it's exciting. He wants us to be excited about his word and we should all be. We should all be coming to him very humbly and like, yes, this is amazing. And the stories in the Bible are so fulfilling and exciting. So I, I can understand coming to him as a child. And, and I think that a lot of us are doing that in our studies. <clears throat> Verse six, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses, for offenses must come, but woe to that man by whom the offense comes. So he's very, very serious about this. It's like, do not stumble the little children and do not stumble new believers. Do not stumble people who are new to their faith. We need to be a, a good example. We need people to, to kind of see the light shining from us and, and draw people to the faith. We don't want to stumble people that are not believers either. We don't want to be the reason that someone goes, that's why I don't go to church because of that hypocrite. So we don't want to stumble anybody. We want to just like, we want to be representatives of, of, of Jesus as we're out here. Mm -hmm. in the world. That's what we're here for. Verse eight. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life lame or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet than to be cast into the everlasting fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. That again is a strong statement. 
it's like Jesus talked a lot about hell and about how to avoid hell. And, and people need to hear that message because I certainly personally don't want to go to hell. I don't want any of my friends or family or anyone to go to hell if they can avoid it. And it's like, if we can share that with people, amen, don't sin. And, and if you are le- walking into that life of sin, back out of it, you know, get some counsel from somebody, get some guidance, do anything you can. And just remember, it just always starts out so small, just a little tiny sin. And then it just kind of snowballs into something bigger and bigger. And it just kind of can drag you down into hell. So just be mindful, be mindful of those little sins, because that's what leads up to those big ones. Verse 10, take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven, their angels always see the face of my father who is in heaven. For the son of man has come to save that which was lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the 99 and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying? And if he should find it, assuredly I say to you, he rejoices Mine, more right. over that sheep than over the 99 that did not go oh, astray. Go. Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Yeah. So here he's telling us that you know we are all the sheep of our Lord. And Jesus loves every single one of us. He even loves the people that we don't particularly care for. <laughs> so we need to understand that everybody is precious to God. And, and if we can help people to, to enter into that relationship with him, that, that's so powerful for us to do. And I love the fact that he gives this example. And I know it's true because I've been lost before and he has found me, you know. He didn't. He doesn't just focus on all the the spiritually healthy people and just it, just focus on them. He goes out of his way to retrieve you from the fire, to to help you when you are in despair. And and I think everybody here has probably felt that, has probably felt scooped up by Jesus and loved by him when things were going really bad. Like we've been that one sheep, and I know I have. And for me, it's a beautiful thing that that he mentions it like this. It gives hope for people, right? Amen. Verse 15. (laughs) Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Okay, so he's telling us here that like when someone sins against you, it's, it's not in your best interest to go and gossip to other people about it. And so-and-so did this to me. And so-and-so did that to me. That's wrong. That's, that's gossiping and it's casting judgment. God wants us to deal with it. He wants us to deal with it in a very fair and humble way. He wants us to start just one-on-one. Hey, I've noticed this, you know, and do it very kindly. And if they don't hear you, you one-on-one. You get a couple more really good faithful servants with you and you try that route. And if that doesn't work, then you take it to the church. But if that doesn't work, then you have to wash your hands of them. And and that can be really hard. But you can always still pray for them. (laughs) Verse 18. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. And this is one of the most beautiful promises that we as Christians have, like, we're all here together. We are gathered together tonight. 
in his name. And he answers our prayers. He answers our petitions. And that's just such a wonderful, comforting thing. So good stuff. Verse 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? So here Peter is thinking that he's being very magnanimous, like, hey, you know, I'll forgive him seven times. That's a lot. And we, as humans, would probably think that would be a lot for us to forgive someone. I know most of us, when someone has wronged us a couple times, we usually, we're done with them. We wash our hands of them. But, you know, Peter sounds pretty good here, right? Seven times. That's, that's a lot of forgiveness, right? Well, it's not. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun, begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Now, this was a huge sum of money back then. Millions it would be like comparative today. Verse 25. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant, therefore, fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then... The master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. Yeah. Can I say something here? Yes. One talent is $1.4 million. One. <laughs> One talent. Wow. And this is how many talents? <laughs> 10,000 <000 laughs> talents. <laughs> I can't even do the math. Yeah. There's no way you're going to pay that back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just came up last Sunday. I looked that up. I was amazed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Today's money. Yeah. In today's money. In today's money. Yes. Yeah. Forgave him the debt. That huge debt he forgave him. Verse 28. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. Now, Pastor, do you know how many, how much a hundred denarii is a day, day's pay, isn't it? Okay. I think a denarius is, is like a day's pay. Yeah. Okay, so this is a real pittance compared to what he had just owed, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he laid hands on him. And it doesn't mean that he laid hands on him and prayed for him. He laid hands on him. He punched him up, took him by the throat, saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. And he would not have, he went and he threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very grieved. And they came and told their master all that had been done. Then the master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should not you have also had compassion with your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Okay, so... 70 times seven, like you just better keep forgiving people. And guess what? God keeps forgiving us every single day. Thoughts that go through our minds, things that we do, things that we say. We are sinful creatures. We are wretched beings. And he continues in his grace and mercy to forgive us more than 70 times seven. I mean, God forgives us just probably more than 10 million times. I mean, he is constantly forgiving us because he's so merciful. So he's telling us, hey, you better be doing that too. You better be forgiving other people for their trespasses. Yes, Pastor. I was wrong. A denarius worth $3.62 in today's money. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> what three? The, what is that? Three hundred sixty-two bucks. Yeah. Is it that? Yeah. <laughs> so that's opposed to what a billion. <laughs> So Sorry. that is that. That I mean, that that whole thing on forgiveness, it really strikes me hard because I have been very hard hearted with certain people and and I've prayed about it and I've worked on it. So like I, I get that, that it's hard to forgive people, but it is so important because when I look at how much God has forgiven me, it, it is mind boggling to me. And it's like how petty of me not to forgive someone for something foolish, you know, so any thoughts on any of chapter 18 of Matthew? Yeah, I think he wants to make clear to us that uh, we are to forgive. Uh, you know, we, go, we gloss over that whenever we say the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. <laughs> we're really kind of tying our own hangman's knot there. When we pray that, we're, we're asking God to treat us the same way uh, that we help uh, forgive us our trespasses. We're asking God to forgive us in the same way that we forgive those who trespass against us. That's that's pretty huge and it is. scary. It yeah. is, and I never thought about it that yeah. way. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, you knew it. <laughs> no, not, not to that degree. And, you know, unfortunately, I think we gloss over a lot of things in the Lord's Prayer when we yeah. don't really prayerfully pray it. So Amen. thank you for that reminder. Yeah. yeah. That's the one thing that, that Jesus went back and reiterated in the next passage, just after the Lord's Prayer, when he taught us to pray it, he went back and he said, if you won't forgive others, your father won't forgive you. He's black ink, white paper, right after he taught us to pray that prayer. The one thing he went back and re and retouched on was that particular phrase, uh, forgive others as, as uh, forgive us as we forgive others. And so, huge. Huge. So, yeah. Anyone else have any, any insights they'd like to share? Renee, it's good to see you. Hi, Renee. I, we don't know you. <laughs> yeah, I have a question. What am I Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, I need to, uh, Tom to clarify that when in verse 22. And Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, yeah. the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And then it says, as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay the master, now we're talking not the king now, this sounds like a master, ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. And it says, at this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go. So did he cancel the debt of the 10,000 bags of gold? I don't quite understand because we were talking about God, or I mean, we were talking about a king who wanted to settle accounts. Now we're talking about a master forgiving this servant. Who, who are we talking about there in verse 22 and 23? The, the master who was owed the debt of about a billion dollars, I guess, 10,000 times 10, 1.4 million. bags of gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One, each bag, 1.4 so million. Understand. So I mean a lot. So the it master sounds like it's talk, sounds, sounds like, like it's talking about a king, and then it goes on to talking about a master, and then we go on to the next twenty-eight. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins, and he grabbed him, began to choke him, pay back what you owe me, and now he's going to uh, he he's, he wouldn't pay, he couldn't, so he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. So I basically okay. got two questions: How is he going to pay the debt take, in prison? Keep track, keep track of who you're talking about here. The guy that was forgiven the billion dollar debt, yeah, walked right out of that meeting after he was forgiven, found a guy that owed him thirty three hundred and fifty dollars, and he grabbed him by the throat and pushed him up against the wall and said, "Pay me that debt." The guy said, "I don't have it," and he had him thrown in prison. So the guy that owed the billion refused to let the guy that owed him three hundred that owed him $362, refused to let him off the hook. And so, okay, so the master... Oh, so I see. The, the guy that had the 10,000 bags of gold, he forgave that servant, it sounds like. But the guy that had his servant owed him 100 silver coins, he wouldn't let him off the hook, evidently, huh? Right. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive others. Yeah. Right? Wow. Bill? Okay. Yeah. Well, it, when they said it was like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants, and that's what threw me, because now we got a king who wants to settle accounts with the servant. But we're not talking about a king at all. We're talking about a, a, a servant who somebody owes him well, 10,000. The king was the guy that was owed, stop with the gold. It was a billion bucks. The king was owed a billion dollars by this, by his servant. Okay? okay. That's one set of guys. The king, the guy said, there's no way I could pay you and fell to his knees and begged for forgiveness. And the king said, okay, I'm going to let you off the hook. And so the guy left. And as he left the king's palace, let's say that, to, just to put it clearly in our minds, he walked down the street, the guy that was forgiven, the guy that was forgiven the big debt, walked down the street, and he ran into a guy that owed him 350 bucks, apparently. And, he, and then he... He refused to forgive that guy that owed him 350 bucks and put him in prison. And then when the king heard about that, that guy he had just forgiven, when he for, when he the king found out that that guy did that, then what did he do? He threw him under the jail, right? I think if I got yeah. that right. Yeah. Yeah, he had him. Uh, he ordered him and his wife and children all that he had be sold to repay the debt. That was that. That was that king, and that's his. Because it states that it's the servant's master took pity on him. Cancel the debt and let him go. The servant's master. So who is the servant's master? Is that the king? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I see. Yeah. Okay. Now it makes so sense. So there's, there's, there's three <laughs> guys. Let's Bill, say they're Bill, talking Bill, Bill and Pete. The beginning, yeah. This is okay. like the kingdom of heaven. Remember? It says at the very beginning. The this is like the kingdom of heaven. A king is like a king, yeah. Who no, wanted to settle accounts he's with his about servants. The kingdom of heaven. Yeah. That's yeah. the whole reason for the parable. Yeah. Okay. He's telling you a story. He said it, it's it's like a guy who did this. And he makes up a story, a parable. A story to to uh make it clear to you. To illustrate. Oh, I see. Yeah, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted right. to settle accounts. So we're not even talking about a king. Okay, I got it. Sorry yeah. about that. Thank you, Lou. That's okay. Thank you, Lou. <laughs> I, <laughs> Thank I, you. I say that uh, I understood that oh, Jesus, um, 70 times 7, that he said to Peter that you should forgive 70 times 7. But that's an instant in terrible amount. Now, look, we've talked about this 419 times. <laughs> and that's per, that's Four, per person, seven, per seven, event. Seven, right? Yeah. Right. Or, or, the 490 yeah. times per person, per event. So it's yeah. thousands of times. It's not just one time. And yeah. that, it's forever. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know just, about you, but I have family who have pushed number, this yeah. that limit. <laughs> you know, there's something, something that can help us all here is that in that time, in Jesus' time, the Hebrew people exaggerated greatly. Right. Mm -hmm. and that, like that, massively. And that was thought to be humorous, and yeah. it was thought to be entertaining, and it was kind of understand a point. We don't talk like that anymore, so they can trip us up with some of that stuff. He was just throwing a number out there that was massive, mm -hmm. just like ten thousand talents. That well, that's we have to do the math. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. it's a billion probably, and so he was just throwing a huge number. It's the same way with four hundred twenty. It's not four hundred twenty. It's it's. What did you just say? What was your name? I'm sorry. Renee. Renee. Mm -hmm. Renee, you just said that about it's it's multiple times for right. each time, each thing. Right, because yeah. seventy times seven is four hundred ninety. So each person, each offense, each time. I mean, that's just like just means like you always have to forgive them. I mean, yeah. exactly. although we should start counting when we're young, and then we can just go <laughs> <Yeah>. out. <laughs> you're four ninety one. You're five hundred. Sorry, you're out. You know. <laughs> 
We should always forgive those. If the Lord's, prayer, if the Lord's prayer teaches us that we're not supposed, that we're supposed to forgive others, that God, that we're asking God to forgive us in the same way we forgive others, who's counting? I want to know where's the millionaire to loan out all that money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What yeah. is he doing with all that exactly. money? Yeah. <laughs> For those who are truly repentant, no matter how many times they ask, you should forgive them. No matter Amen. how many times Amen. they ask. Yeah, if they are truly repentant. Too. Okay, Amen. very good. Thank you, Avery, for a very nice class tonight. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Hey, God bless everybody. You too, Avery. God bless you. Thank you, Avery. Wonderful to see everybody's beautiful faces. All right, Love my friends. You. Love you. Bye. Good night, all. Good night. Good night.